Hey guys, Mal here, and today we're going to take a look at rigging up an automatic watering system. I'm going to assume you've already got a farm down. If that's not the case, check out my complete farming guide and then come back. So let's take a look at what we're going to need for this. We'll need a power source, timers, blockers, electrical branches, and a wire tool. Honestly, Gal and I had about six prototypes, which were all crazy complicated and weren't working right. Then I had a light bulb moment, and after a few hours of messing with it, I banged out the most simple and as far as I can tell best circuit for automating your sprinklers. Start with your power source. If this circuit is part of a bigger network, and thus your power source is actually a branch, you'll need to branch off 17 power for this circuit. Run your power source into an electrical branch. This circuit is a bit branch heavy, so to help simplify things, I'm going to label each of the components. As such, this is branch A and we need to branch out 14 power. Run the branch out on branch A to branch B, which needs to be set to 8 power. The branch out on branch B runs to timer A, and the power out on timer A runs to the power in on branch C. Now here's where things get a little tricky. Run the power out on branch C to the power in on blocker A, and the branch out on branch C to timer B. Run the power out from timer B to the block socket on blocker A. Now go back to timer A and run the power out into the power in on branch D. Run the power out from blocker A into the trigger socket on timer A. Go back to branch D. Run the branch out to the trigger on timer B. As for the power out on branch D, we want to run that into branch E. The branch out on branch E runs to the on switch on your pump. The power out on branch E runs to the block socket on blocker B. Duck back to branch A and run the power out into the power in on blocker B. Then take the power out from blocker B to the off switch on the pump. The final piece of the puzzle is setting the timers. The left timer controls how long the crops will be watered. The right timer controls how often they should be watered. So for example, if we set the left timer to 5 seconds and the right timer to 10 seconds, then every 10 seconds the crops will be watered for 5 seconds. If you're having trouble changing the timers, disconnect their triggers, change them, and then reconnect them. You'll have to disconnect the circuit's power, wait for the timers to finish, and then reconnect it for the timers to sync up. Now how long you set them for is a tricky topic. See, each of the different plants has different optimal saturation points. For example, pumpkins require 6,500 to 8,000 water in the planter to be fully saturated. Too much or too little and it will have a negative effect on the plant. Not to mention the W genes on each plant increase their water requirements. There are too many variables to accurately give you a definite set of times. Instead, you're going to have to feel it out as you're developing your strains. A lot of changes are coming to the new farming system in the next patch. I'm hesitant to dive too deeply into optimizing your water flow for each plant until we see how much they've tweaked variables and what they've added. So for the meantime, play around with the timing. Find something that works with your specific water supply and plants. If you have a bigger farm and thus more pumps, then you can increase the power, add electrical branches before the pump switches, and chain electrical branches to each of your pumps to include them. Hopefully this should help alleviate the water issues that we are currently experiencing. I want to say a massive thanks to everyone who has been getting involved with farming in the comments. There have been some exceptionally talented people getting in touch and giving me all sorts of info on the farming, saving me countless hours of research. A very special thanks goes out to Wavy for pouring over 30 hours into researching farming. He not only wrote his own server plugin to have greater control over farming, but he also made his own farming simulator based on the rust farming conditions. The support and help has been immense, and it is all greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much. Also, if there's anything else you'd like to know how to do, leave me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.